I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru. This is John Martindale, our news bloke, and we're going to talk about VR. John has with him an Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. That's what DK2 stands for. Uh, so, John, tell us when the release version of Oculus Rift is going to be here. Uh, well, the CV1, which is the first commercial uh, headset that uh, Oculus has ever put out, will begin shipping, I think it's on the 28th of March. Uh, started pre-order started up in January, um, so it's been a little bit of a wait for people, but we're getting very close now. So it's and you've exciting. got your name down for one of those. I have. Due to be yep. the first batch. Yeah, yeah. And I it's sure costing it was, how much money? Uh, it was five hundred and thirty pounds shipped to the UK, but the base price for America was six hundred dollars. So, so the UK dollar tax applies once yeah, again, as Excellent. usual. Right now, the DK two you've got here, and I'm going to have John put it on in a moment just so we can have a little bit of a laugh. Uh, is fundamentally similar to the release version. But the release version does differ in certain respects, particularly in screen resolution. Yeah, Give it, us some numbers. There's not a, a, a huge jump. Um, the jump between the DK1 to the DK2 was more significant, I think, in terms of actual resolution. Um, the DK2 comes fitted with a single 1080p display, whereas the Rift CV1 will come with dual displays, um, which brings them up to 2160 by 1200 across both eyes. Um, and what are the sizes of these screens that, with that massive resolution? Because obviously, uh, with generally with desktop PCs, that would be, well, what, 28 inches? Though, yeah, well, it? the one uh, hidden inside the DK2 is only 5.7 inches. So they're pretty small displays. Uh, and obviously, when there's two of them in the CV1, it's smaller again. Right. Um, and they're in very close proximity to your face. But with the uh, lenses they have in there, um, it makes it possible to get quite a good image up close. Now you've been playing games with your VR set. Uh, yep. What else have you been? Uh, well, when did you first start using one of these development kits for the uh, first person? Got the DK one back in uh, probably early 2014, um, right. and then picked up the DK two uh, when the pre-orders for that went up in sort of around mid 2014. So okay. I've had this for quite a while now, uh, and the kind of content that's been available for it has changed quite a lot. Um, throughout that time, you started off initially, there was a lot of roller coaster demos, uh, which is mm. very easy sort of stuff, yep. you know, where you can sit down, you put the headset on, and it Vomit. happens. <laughs> right, exactly. There's, there's certainly a risk of that. Um, but uh, th throughout that, there's, um, there's been horror games, which have been very mm. effective. There's been uh, action games. And now, as we get much closer to the commercial launch of the headsets, um, there's a lot of different kinds of experiences coming out. Some of them room scale, where you can walk around. Some of them, mm -hmm. um, if we move into other technology, where you can get hand controllers involved. There's a lot of exciting yeah, things. The to Michael Jackson to. sort of glove type thing we've seen. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, but not yet a whole body suit where everything is. Uh, not, I think there's people working on it, but right. it's all very early stages at the moment. Right. And what sort of PC have you been using? What PC did you first use? So best part of two years ago, and what are you using now? Uh, and how's it working for you? I started off using a 280X and uh, recently upgraded that to a Fury X, which was slightly better in certain games. Um, but the DK2 is not a particularly taxing piece of kit. It's, right. um, it, the difficulty with virtual reality is you need to hit high frame rates because yeah. without a high frame rate, nausea is much more common. So the DK2... In comes, this context, uh, we're talking 90 frames a second well, that's with, rather than 60. That's with the, uh, the commercial version of the headset is a 90 right. hertz screen. Um, so that's the idea. Is, is Oculus has been very adamant that it wants to hit mm. 90 frames per mm. second across the board regardless of what you're doing. Um, the DK2, 75 hertz screen, so a little bit easier to hit right. that sort of target, which is why the uh, graphics card required is not quite so strenuous. Okay. Um, uh, and we know that in 2016, this thing with VR coming is clearly the manufacturers are keen as mustard to ship yeah. high-end PCs, Core i something or other. Yep. Um, I, did I see that the minimum system requirement is actually a Core i5 rather than a Core i7? It is, yeah. Um, you don't have to have the, the most high-end CPU in the world. Right. Um, Oculus does recommend at least a GTX 970 right. or uh, an R9 290, okay. um, which it, it, it's not top-end, right. but it's it's still at the uh, the several hundred pound graphics card margin, which yeah. You know, not. I think according to Steam Hardware Survey, you've got about 15% of all users have that sort of specification. Mind you, what percentage so, have you got using Intel HD something or other? That's true. You're always it's doing probably it's a, a very higher. strange survey. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Oculus Rift and we've also got HTC Vive. What's the difference? The HTC Vive really uh, comes down to. Uh, the, the internal hardware of the, of the headsets themselves is very similar. Right. We've got very similar displays, very similar lens technology. Um, the ergonomics of the headset aren't too dissimilar either. Okay. So basically a glorified set of goggles. Pretty much, right. yeah. The, the real difference in comes uh, with the type of content the two headsets are targeting. So Oculus has been adamant from the start that it's 
face it's aiming for a forward facing sort of 180 degree experience now right. it will have positional tracking in 360 degrees so you will be able to look all the way around you okay. and you can move forward and backwards left and right up and down uh, in 360 degrees. That, That's is that a six problem. axis of motion? Thing Pretty much, right, yeah. Okay, right. um, however, it tends to be, it's, it's aiming for a static experience for the most part, seated and standing. It can right. handle what we just call room scale, mm. but not to the same extent that HTC headset can. Okay. Um, that's to do with the tracking system. Now, right. the Oculus setup uses something called Constellation, which is uh, infrared camera based, whereas uh, is, is that vaguely similar to uh, the Xbox uh, Kinect? Similar right. kind of technology, and it's the same sort of thing we see with the DK2. Okay. Uh, I think the Constellation camera uh, that comes with the CV1 will be mounted on a free stand, but that's, right. that's for the most part the big difference. Um, in comparison, the HTC Vive uses uh, Valve's Lighthouse tracking system, which is laser-based, and you get two... Uh, sensors from the get-go it comes with in the base set right um, and that offers a much wider field of view um, better um, occlusion so you don't end up with uh, losing tracking quite so often okay um, but really this is although we have a very good idea of what this is all going to be like based on pre-release hardware we're still waiting to see yeah. what the final hardware is like absolutely